So if you need help with the Bible, Rachel will knows everything where places are. Oh, I, oh, I know the Bible fairly well. Oh, say oh, all right. All right, we're going to be doing John. The Gospel of John. John 1-1. 1-1. Yeah. I've been reading. But I guarantee with my studies, we're, we're not going to finish in a month and two months. <laughs> we're going to, we do in-depth okay. when we do the Bible studies. That's why I said bring paper. I did. Because he'll tell you verses that apply to what we're reading. If you need me to slow down, if you need me to slow down, tell me slow down. If you have a question, put your hand up and we'll have questions. You're not going to interrupt me. Unless you pull out your chainsaw or your... <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's no chance of me doing that. Alright, so let's pray. Lord God, we gathered here, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together, Lord. Amen. And Lord, we're gathered here in your word by the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we don't want to look to tomorrow. We look to today, Lord, as we open up your word and study. But Lord, you know what's in my heart. You know what plans I have. But right now, Lord God, the Gospel of John, help me to be clear, help that these machines will shut up. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So the Gospel of John is written by John, the Apostle, the disciple of Jesus Christ. And the reason for John, John's Gospel, is John chapter 20, John chapter 20. You gotta go to the end of the gospel to find out what the gospel is for. Kind of like, yeah, here, read it. And then I'll tell you. Yeah, right now we're just gonna do, we're gonna look at what John is. So the gospel of John chapter 20. Bear with me, this is a brand new Bible and it's hard to open. John 20, verse 31. This is the purpose. The reason why we have God's, the, God, the Gospel of John, it's a Gospel that's written later. It's a Gospel that has more of the church age in it. Unlike Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In John chapter 20, verse 31, John writes to us, but these, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. So, the reason for John is to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, is the Christ, anointed by God, the Son of God. And we'll see that through the Gospel of John. And John, the Gospel, is a good book when you're dealing with somebody who's not saved, and they're agnostic. They don't know. Agnostic means somebody who doesn't know. They, they're not saying yes, and they're not saying no. And they have an open heart say, listen, if you'll do something for me, I want you to go to the Gospel of John, and every night I want you to read one chapter. Start off with chapter 1 and chapter 2. And I want you to prayerfully seek God. And the attention that we see here to know Christ is the Son of God. If that man is willing to, to receive what God has told him, God working on his heart, there are good chances using the Gospel of John for a man to get saved. Let God work with them. Let the Word of God work with them. Let prayer work with them. Pray for them. Let them pray. Before you start a chapter, say, God, show me. And that's not against Scripture because this verse 31 right. says to show. And I've used it many times. Have people gotten saved? I don't know. I don't know. But it's good attentions. Now the, the Apostle John not only wrote the Gospel of John, but he's the author of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, which you find in the Bible. That's the same John. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And then when we go to 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, you go to Revelation. Revelation. Got all kinds of stuff. Last book in the Bible. And we're looking at 
Okay, Revelation chapter 1. Again, we're looking at the introduction to John and John the writer to get his biblical credentials that God has set for us. Because who is John? Who is the Gospel of John? We know it's about Jesus, but... And we'll see some divine characteristics of John. And I can get you to see if I can turn the pages. I have a hard time turning the pages, so... Yeah, me too sometimes. <laughs> so, Revelation chapter 1, still on the Apostle John. And we find in chapter 1, verse 9, I, John, there he is, who also am your brother, saved, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, here's John, the writer of Revelation. He's in jail because of the Word of God. He's in jail because he spoke and testified of Jesus Christ. Like Paul. Just like Paul. So, verse 4, John to the seven churches. Now, John is going to get in depth of future events of what we call the tribulation period. We're not going to look at that today, but looking at John, here he is one-on-one -on -one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Here he is in jail because of Jesus Christ. He has a gospel. He has 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And not only that, do we see John, the writer of, of the gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Revelation. But we also have John with a revelation of Jesus Christ and the friendship of Jesus that we do not see in any other disciple. And we'll, let's turn to our Bibles to John chapter 13. The Gospel of John chapter 13. And before we get into John, let's find out the start of the Gospel and the John himself. And we will be all over through the Scriptures. And as we study along, we're going to be studying other aspects of the Bible. That's how God lays it out. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. So that's what we're doing. We're studying. In John 13, 23, John chapter 13, verse 23, Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned on him that he would ask who it should be of whom he spake. And he that lay on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Okay, so the person we're not talking about, or the person we're not talking about here is, is not Simon Peter. Peter has turned to the disciple that has his head rested upon the breast of Jesus Christ. God manifests in the flesh, in the, in the flesh and here is one disciple, he's got his ear next to the heart of God. And it's important to know, chapter 21, John 21, 20. John 21, 20. John chapter 21, verse 20. It says, Then Peter turned about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved. That ran us back to chapter 13. There's a specific disciple that Jesus loved. It's not Peter. which also leaned on his breast at supper. That's what we already read. 
and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeth him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus said to him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying aboard among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, Ye shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. Well, who wrote? John. That beloved disciple that leaned upon the breast of Jesus Christ is John himself who wrote the Gospel of John. So the man that wrote this Gospel, you talk about the heart of God, there is his ear at the meal, at the dinner. And it's not Peter. Peter's not the principal disciple. He's not the principal no. uh, apostle. Somebody's got it wrong. It's John. He's beloved and he's loved. And with the yeah, and with the testimony of John, he, let's look at what John was involved with when it came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Luke 22, the Gospel of Luke 22, verse 8, and we're going to see some things about John today before we even get into the. Gospel of Luke, if I can open. I mean, Gospel of John. Hmm. Uh, I can't open this. this missing. Oh, no, it is. It was before John. Yeah. Get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And see if I can open up my Bible. <laughs> which I can't. Uh, All right, Luke chapter 22, verse 8. See, there is emphasis put on one of these disciples that should not be put on. And there's not to be emphasis put on John either. The emphasis is supposed to be upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter and John are sinners, but when we got Luke chapter 22, verse 8, watch this. Oh, in there, sorry. No problem. Take your time. Need. Like I said, I had a hard time opening the Bible too. Not We're not in a rush. Twenty-two verse eight. Oh, okay. That's what I thought you said. The Bible says in twenty-two eight, and he sent. This is Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, "Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat." And they said unto him, "Where wilt thou prepare?" He said unto him, "Behold, when ye enter into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth." Imagine this guy, he's walked into his house and here's these two men following. What do you guys want? It's like, wow. <laughs> and ye shall say unto the good man of the house, the master, Jesus, says unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he, showed, he, he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. Remember, he's talking to Peter and John. And they went and found as he had said unto him, and they made ready to pass over. John and Peter is the one that prepared that last meal. They went and found the, the man who had it. Now remember, we're in, the, we're in the Passover. This is one of the three times of the year that all the Jewish males are supposed to appear in Jerusalem by the law. And the only way they can find room is God has already set one place, one man, and he sends his two uh, disciples now, Peter and John. He says, go find this man, go find this place. And that, you know, that, that painting, you know, Jesus and disciples is wrong. But that meal that prepared was prepared by Peter and John. Wow. And that's not much spoken about. Um... So John is not only there at the Last Supper, he's the one that prepared the Last Supper. He's also, John chapter 19, he's also at the cross. John 19. We're going to see John in many places that the other disciples are not. John 19. 
John 19, 26. So not only is he at the, the Last Supper, he's there preparing the Last Supper. And when they're having the meal, he is leaning upon Jesus. And mm -hmm. Peter is second, secondary. John 19, 26, we see, And when Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, okay, well, who? that's John. Scripture with Scripture. He saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. All right. Okay, here's John. There is no other disciple at the cross of Jesus but John, the one that's loved. Peter's not there. John is standing at a distance of Jesus that he is in agonizing on the cross, suffocating, being crucified, because that, that's the effects of the crucifixion. You're drowning inside your body fluid. That John can hear Jesus speaking. And they're both carrying a conversation, and John is so close to Jesus, he's right next to the mother, Mary of Jesus. Now, don't you think she'd be close to her son? Yeah. So that's how close John is, and there is no other disciple there but John. So John, only when he writes his gospel, and he's writing about the death, burial, and resurrection, which many, many, many years come down the road, we'll get to that. Right. John is the one right there, watching Jesus die. Mm. And not only that, Jesus said, there's my mother. Now, we don't know what happened to Joseph. We can speculate, I'm going to say something happened to Joseph, and Joseph is no more. We don't know. But there's Jesus' mother and the, dis the disciple that made the, made the Passover meal, who is at the Passover meal, who is at the breast of Jesus, who is at the cross. He says, when it comes time to take care of my mother, you're in charge, John. And then he takes her. And he takes care of her and brings her home and takes care of her. And Mary, listen, Mary's a wonderful woman, but her name's not even mentioned there. It says my mother. Right. Or a woman. That. Or a woman. So take so your... It makes me wonder why the Catholic Church... Well, I was going to say, take your name off Peter, take your name off Mary. It's about the man who's dying on the cross. Right. And John's name is not even mentioned. Jesus' name is mentioned. So when people say, well, Jesus, he called her woman and all that. He didn't take care of his mother. He took care of his mother before he died. He made applications for her to have a standing. So John is at the cross. John is at the Passover meal. Now let's see John at the empty tomb, chapter 20, again. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, empty tomb. Chapter 20, verse 2. Chapter 20, verse 2. Now we're going to see him at the empty tomb. Verse 2 again. And verse 1 is the first day of the week. It's a Sunday. It's not a Saturday. It's not the Sabbath. And verse 2, Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. You see, have we run that cross reference? There he is. And says unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the, that other disciple and came to the disciple, uh, yeah, came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple outran Peter. <laughs> They're having a race to the tomb and John outruns Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And stooping down, he looked in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in, and then Peter will go in. John peeks into that sepulcher, and all he sees is the clothes. So John is also a resurrected witness that Christ is not in that tomb, that the angels proclaim, he's not here, he's not risen. Anybody witness that? Yeah, John and Peter. And then the women that were there. So... Look at the character. Look at the person that's written, John. Look at where he's been. Look where he's going. Look at his story. He is what you would call an eyewitness to Jesus. Um, now we're going to see John 
in a couple verses here. John is in the inner circle of Jesus. You're going to have Peter, James, and John. And Jesus is going to call these three men out for a special thing that the other nine disciples never saw. And we'll see that now in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Matthew 17, chapter 1. And when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see witnesses. Oh, all these pages don't want to turn on me. I'm trying to get there. Bear with me. My pages, they're crispy. All right, 17. And what you're going to see with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is picture is like this. There's an automobile accident. And there are people standing on four different corners. And they clean up the accident. The police officer walks over to one corner and says, Sir, what did you see? And he tells the story. The police officer walks to the other corner and says, Sir, what did you see? And he tells his and all four men. That's what we're seeing with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four witnesses. That's why they're different, because it's four different eyes, four sets of eyes. But when we look at John, Chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up to a high mountain. The other disciples are not involved. Only Peter, James, and John. The same John that writes our Gospel, John. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And this is the transfiguration of Jesus. And his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto Moses and Elias talking with him. Now, I've always overread this, and I've talked to several preachers and Christians about this. you got to ask yourself, how did they know this was Moses' life? They didn't wear name tags. And I've always questioned throughout my Christian walk, are we going to know each other in heaven? And yet here we see that they know exactly who Moses and Elias is. And they've been gone for how many, how many years? Oh, okay. So if Peter, James, and John knows Moses and Elias as well, I guess there's, I'm going to say 95% chance we're going to know who we are in heaven. Well, even with a new body. Yeah. Even with a new body. Oh, hi, how you doing? Oh, praise God. Huh? So... Moses and like John, again, we're getting off Peter and James. John, the writer of the gospel, sees Moses and Elijah. Now, Moses and Elijah prophesied of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus died according to the scriptures and was buried. That's the gospel. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Well, what would those scriptures be? Moses and Elijah. And here, John, our main man that we're talking about besides Jesus, he's met them. So here's most lies. And they then answered Peter. And said, the Lord, it's not good. We, let's make three tabernacles. Well, another place in the scripture says Moses, Elijah, and Jesus were talking about his death and his fulfillment. And again, here is John amongst this company of the law, Moses. Peter, I mean Peter, James, God. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy are the law. That was written by Moses. The prophets, Elijah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Micaiah, Habakkuk, those are the prophets. That is represented here by Elijah. Elijah. Elias. Elijah. Oh, okay. And John is there with him. John not only sees Moses' Elijah, but he sees Jesus in his heavenly form as white, as light, as ever can be white, as light, where he would appear in glory. God's got to give us a new body and new eyeballs because if we went to heaven right now, our eyeballs would fry. We can't even imagine what glory would be. So there, there's John at Peter, James, and John in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, again, this inner circle. In Mark chapter 5, 
verse 37. Yeah, yeah quicker than me. That will be okay. Five. Five thirty-seven. Amen. And my fingers are open faded. So we're seeing this inner circle, and you know, I've heard churches, I've heard pastors say, "Well, I've got my inner circle of friends, my cliques, but they're not there to write anything." Peter, James, and John. John writes first, second, third John, and the Re book of Revelation. Peter writes 1st and 2nd Peter. James writes the book of James. These three men are authors of the books in the New Testament. That's why Jesus called them amongst the others. So you can't say, well, Peter, no. Well, hey, listen, I got James and John as a witness. You can't go up to James and say, James, I don't believe it. Well, I got John and Peter as a witness. And you can't go up to John and say, John, you're a liar. Well, I've got Peter and my brother, James, as a witness. And besides all three, we've got Jesus. And we also got Moses and Elijah as a witness. <laughs> Nothing's done in secret with Jesus. Everything's out in the open. Yeah, everything's out in the open. It's true. So when somebody tries to do something secret, like these organizations, these clubs, that's not Christian. You know, handshakes and all that. Jesus, everything's all, even when he's in his inner disciples, the three, it's still open. So, in Mark chapter 5, verse 37, Peter, James, and John said, And he suffered no man to follow him, Jesus, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the, root, to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and sees the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he come in, he says, Why make ye ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. Now here's this girl, she's dying. The nine disciples are outside again. Peter, James, and John are coming in. They come into the room where this, this little girl has died. Everybody's boo-hoo crying. Now that is a tradition of the Jews. They will hire people to cry and mourn at someone's death. It makes it like, oh, this person is so great. And so, many, so many people. Yeah, no, it's serious. They would hire now, everybody loves Jesus, don't they? Sure. All right. So Jesus says, she sleepeth, and they laughed him to scorn. Jesus walks in the room. Oh, she's not dead. She sleepeth. <laughs> you hear what Jesus said? And so when, when you're in a public ministry, you're being scorned at, so was Jesus. Mm. Yep. You only make the Bible true. When somebody makes fun of you as a Christian, they're making fun of Jesus. Now, if you got this Bible that has red letter, Jesus says, she's not dead, sleepeth. And what did they do? They laugh him to scorn. But when he put them out, everybody's there in the room. He says, get out of here. I don't think he said it like that, but he clears the room out. Okay? He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and then that were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entered where the damsel was lying lying down, not telling them fibs. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tabula Kamai, which is being interpreted. So there's, there's a Greek word that God wants you to know. And interprets it. Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose, walked. Alright, we'll stop right there. Here's a resurrection. Peter, James, and John witnesses the, the resurrection of this girl with her parents. And all the scorners are cast out and don't see nothing. So now, what happened that, that afternoon? This damsel's walking around. Everybody knows she's died. Well, you were in the room. What did you see? No, he booted us out. We made fun of him. He kicked us out. Well, who saw it? The mother, the father, and those three, those three disciples over there. Peter, James, and John now can write. John can write. I saw that. Peter and I saw that. Peter, James, and I saw that. And let's add two more. Let's add the parents and never mind the damsel. And this damsel, 12 years. I mean, no, this is wrong. She's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. That's what it is. She pictures the oh, resurrection of the nation of Israel at the second advent of Jesus Christ. And you know what God will do to all the wicked people who scorn and mocked him when he sets up 
Israel as a nation in their land, as he will be seated on the throne of David, he will cast them out into outer darkness. He'll make them as the goats and cast them out. And you have the mother and father who here see it, and they would represent the sheep nation. Why? Didn't they take care of that little girl? Didn't they feed that little girl? Didn't they nurse that little girl? Didn't they take care of that little girl? And Jesus said to those people, that when you take care of the Jews in tribulation, you fed them, you visited them, you went to prison for them, you gave them first aid, you shall enter into the, to the millennial kingdom as a reward. And those that did not help, those that were only a burden, those that scorned, get out of my face. You ain't going to see Israel in the land. And Peter, James, and John saw that. Yep. Judas, did you see? No, I wasn't there. Thidus. Thidus, did you see it? No, I didn't see nothing. Matthew, did you? No. What about you, Mark? I didn't see it, but I asked Peter, James, and John about it. I wrote about it. Yeah. And that's how the Gospels come. With what they eyewitness, we'll see that later on. And what they, hey, Peter, James, come here. Let's sit down here. All right, tell me what happened. And by prayer and by the Holy Spirit, Mark would okay. There it is. So when people say men wrote the Bible, yes. Yeah, my mother used to say, oh, sorry to interrupt that. My no. Mother used to say, I tried to witness her. I said, well, you know, it's the Bible. I used to say, yeah, well, you, you know, because men wrote the Bible. Yeah, that's like, come on. 100%. That's what she used to say to me. That's 100% yeah, like, men wrote the Bible, but as yeah. a witness. There were witnesses. I, I tried to tell a bunch of fire Yeah, and a lot of people, that's just, you know, Satan's one of his tools. Of, that's sad. He's got very few tools. Yeah. And there it is. Testimony of Peter, James, and John. John, who is the subject of our... We like to say also, men wrote the history books that our children are learning in school, and we believe those. Textbooks were written by men. Right. And they're wrong, because <laughs> they got to rewrite them every, every two or three years. Tree. That's right. <laughs> you ever hear the story so. of uh, George Washington chopping down the cherry tree? Uh, yes, I have. That's a lie. He never chopped down a nope. cherry tree. You want to know something even more about that? You know who came up with that story? A preacher. Preacher? Yep. Really? Yes. Would you all call Revere to the British? No, he couldn't because, because he would woke up the British. <laughs> yeah, they were, in the, uh, they were already in the town. It was the night before so Christmas. Everybody so he was British. you got to remember, before the independence, yeah, everybody. everybody in the whole colony was British in, in, in America. Yeah. So you ever hear, you ever hear of it was the night before Christmas about Santa Claus? Yes. That was written by a pastor for his children. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. A pastor. I, I think that was a fiscal no. pairing. I think it was. A, I think that was a fiscal pairing, but I yeah, can't we be. All know Sam's but <laughs> those lies are coming from the pulpit. Mark sits That's down with Peter, James, and John, and his testimony is true because the Holy Spirit put it in here. I say when they say men wrote the Bible, okay, yeah. But they had his, the Holy Spirit. The pen. Right? It, the pen is the man, and the ink is the Holy Spirit. That's exactly how it is. The Bible didn't come, okay, God said, okay, here's your Bible. It's got to be written by man. It has to, yes. But the Holy Spirit inspired. So that's why it's infallible. That's right. And Mark 13. So I hope we're laying a good ground on who John is so we can believe his gospel. In Mark 13, verse 3. In Mark 13, 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, I've always picked a big Mount of Olives. I don't know, I, every time I hear that, I always wondering with or without the uh, pimento. I, I got a warped mind. Sometimes I will share my warped mind. And, over against the okay. temple. Okay, so here is that temple. Here is Jesus sitting with Peter, James, and John. See what manner of stones and what buildings are here. So Peter, James, and John are sitting there. Wow, isn't this great? Look at this thing. Isn't it great, God, how great this temple is? And Jesus answered, says, See thou these great buildings? There shall not be one, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And that building is not there today. It was destroyed 33 AD. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, 
tell us what shall these things be. Now, I'm not going to go into the rest of Matthew 13 or, or uh, Matthew 24, but when everybody say, well, oh, earthquakes are coming, this is the signs of God, and there'll be wars and famines, and Peter, Jane, Andrew, and John, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew said, Lord, what's going to be? We know that information because of Peter, James, and John, and Andrew said, Jesus, when's this going to happen? And then he breaks forth and tells us. That's because three of the disciples and Andrew said, hey, Jesus. So is it wrong to ask questions in the Bible or anything like that? Not for Peter, James, and Andrew. Jesus didn't say, hey, listen, shut up. I'm God. I'm speaking. Talk to you later. No, he says, and he goes, okay, Jesus answering, began to say, and he goes, okay, you got a question? Try doing that in the church service. And the man's up there in the pulpit. Uh, I got a question. Put you on down. Tell you know? you, we'll talk later. In the Isn't the preaching on that? Isn't it supposed to for the people to know? That's right. To follow? And if you lose what was being said, I've sat in church, or, and you know, just whatever thing, my mind's gone blank, and now the rest of the message is gone. That's why I say, here, you got questions? Yeah, your church, you know, you yeah. If you've got questions, well, ask you. You need to, you know. I've heard, I've heard recordings of when it was younger church, yep. and they used to let people ask questions. When, it, when it sat down with people like us. Now they don't. When it was like you and I. Like I said, if you need me to go back, you need me. Because I want you to get. Like I said, right now, before we get into the Gospel of John, we gotta know who John is. Amen. And I hope I'm setting it. And Mark 14. Mark 14. I can't turn this page. I'm getting out of You're in two days with Jesus and Passover. Yeah, I get the enemy. You got to bear with me today. I, I can't. I've never used this Bible before, so it's it's crispy. It's the onion skin pages. Uh, actually, not this kind because you can't. If you use it too much, you'll rip and tear. I've had one like it. Mark 14.33 And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And he said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Terry, you know where he is right now? He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying these, these Mark three... 14? Yeah. Mark 14? You got the right one? Mark 14. 14? 14. Oh, 33. Because that was... <laughs> that happens. So, he's in the garden, he's praying to the Father three times, and he's going to come back three times and he's going to find them asleep, but there they are in the garden as he's praying to the Father. So, John is at the Last Supper. No, he prepares the Last Supper. John is there at the death of Jesus Christ, dying on that cross. John goes to the empty tomb and sees nobody. He sees the resurrected Jesus Christ and he sees the resurrected little girl. John is at the garden where Jesus prays before he died. This is the same John that we're going to read his gospel about Jesus. And I would think Peter is very, when you read the scriptures, Peter is very outspoken. I think it's good. And don't you think if Peter would got a hold of the Gospel of John, if he's reading and say, well, wait a minute, John, that's not true. If James, uh, well, James dies early, so. Okay, so there is the three Peter, James, and John, looking at who John is. Now, James, we see Peter, James, and John, and we've read. James, the brother of John. So let's look at that. Matthew 4, 21. The Gospel of Matthew 4, 21. Now, I rarely run to Matthew. And I'll tell you why. Matthew is a Jewish Gospel to the Jewish people. And many of the church runs to Matthew. And they, they will take church doctrine and take it out of Matthew, which would be taken out of context. But Matthew 4, 21. Oh, 
Matthew 4.21, as I try to get these pages. I know James and John brothers. Matthew 4.21, and it says, And going on from thence, he sees, two, he sees other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. So we know, okay, now John and James are brothers, and their father is Zebedee. In a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. All right, so John is a fisherman, as Peter and Andrew. Mm -hmm. And they're working with their father. So he's in a family business with his father, with his brother, working. Mark 3.17 Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verse 17. And we're just seeing now that James and... and uh, John, our brothers, mm -hmm. James, the son of Zebedee, we saw who that is, that's, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boagones, which is the sons of thunder. What a name to give them. I know. Uh, calling them thunder because, you know, <laughs> that's what they were. Okay, so there's, there's the brothers again. Mark chapter 10. Verse 35. Oh, yeah. Mark 10, 35. So we got one more. We got a page here, and then we'll be done. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 35. I'm going to try to turn the page. Oh. Oh, come on. I can't give me one of those rubber fingers. <laughs> oh. I'm trying. Okay, there we go. 1035. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, so we're getting this father, uh -huh. come on to the same master. Okay, so there they are again. There's the two brothers okay. and their father. Who's he calling master? Their father or That's Jesus? Jesus. That's Jesus. <laughs> In Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And we're just getting scripture with scripture, which will lay other grounds. Oh, excuse me. Luke chapter 9. 9. No, 5. 5. 5. 10. 5. 10. 5. 10. We go 9 afterwards. In Luke 5. 10. And, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. That's Peter. And Jesus said to Simon, so now what we learn, not only is James and John's brother, but they were partners with Simon, Peter, and Andrew, who is his brother. Peter, James, and John were business partners. As fishermen, they worked together. So here, this Peter, James, and John, they already knew each other. They already worked with each other. They were already friends and family type. Family type of friends. More than just friends. And Luke chapter 9. So we're, we're learning more about who these men are. Luke chapter 9 verse 54. Let's see what I get here. 9.54 9.54, Luke. <laughs> now the, the sons of fire, the, thun, uh, the sons of thunder we see here, we think about Peter being the, the big mouth one. <laughs> Oop, oh, come on. I gotta go back here. Alright, Luke 9.54. Yeah, right, I have a fly buzzing around. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we, that we, we, James and I, command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? 
They rejected the word of God, and James and John says, we call fire down? Wow, isn't it character yeah. these two? Like, oh, you know? And then Jesus rebukes them. You don't know what manner of spirit you are. Oh. So these guys were just like Peter. They spoke, and they spoke bold. Like, if anybody didn't go for Jesus, we're going to destroy him. Yeah. Uh, but, and we just read earlier, Jesus called them the sons of thunder. Well, that may be one of the reasons why. <laughs> Even Peter didn't open up his mouth that time. So, in Acts chapter 12, verse 2, right after John, Acts 12. Acts chapter, sorry. No problem, Acts chapter 12. No problem. I'm trying to get there too. chapter 12 verse 1 now about the time Herod Roman ruler the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and he killed James the brother of John with the sword so here's John his brother is killed because of the word of God we already saw back in Revelation chapter 1 John's in prison for the word of God his brother is killed for the for the word of God and is beheaded so. <laughs> um, let's try and see what notes they have here. So, here is James being killed in the early book of Acts. And this must be reveal who we are and where we are in the book of Acts. If you're going to study the book of James, if that's the writer of James, the brother of John. I mean, but that's not our study today, but there's all kinds of people who think James is James and another James and all that. So that's the that's the brother James of John. Now, John chapter 21, verse 1. Uh, John chapter 21, verse 1. Now we're going to see after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the position of John. John, the Gospel of John 21, verse 1. We see him at the Lord's. We see him preparing the Lord's Supper. We see him at the Lord's Supper. We see him in the Garden of Gethsemane. We see him at the cross. We see him at the empty tomb. Now Jesus Christ is definitely risen. He's shown himself in John chapter twenty-one, verse one. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, which is the Sea of Galilee. Sea Galilee has four names. Yep. And on this wise he showed himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, Thomas called Dynamis, Nathan El of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. That was his occupation. And they said unto them, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. And when it was morning, was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew that it was knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have any meat? And they answered him, No, we didn't catch nothing. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. I guess they've been casting on the wrong side. And they cast, therefore, now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisherman's coat onto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. 
And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw the fire and the coals thereof, there, uh, there, and the fish laid there up with bread. So Jesus has started a barbecue with fish. As the disciples are coming with the boat, Peter jumps overboard and starts swimming to Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Amazing how it tells us how many fish there were. Why? Something to it, I don't know. And Jesus said, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing it was the Lord. And Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. Now, Jesus fed the multitude with bread and fish. He's given them bread at the, at the Last Supper. They know who it is. And now, the third time, Jesus showed himself unto his disciples. Three times. They saw the resurrected Christ. Um, so, let's see. Going down to... And we've already read 20 to 25. In verse 24, same chapter, 21, 24, this is the disciple, testified these things and wrote these things as the Gospel of John. There he is. He's seen the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected. And in the book of Revelation, he sees Jesus Christ in his heavenly form and gives a description of that. Uh... In Acts chapter 3, he's going about with a ministry with Peter. In Acts chapter 4, he's in prison for the word of God with Peter. In Galatians chapter 2, the book of Galatians. Galatians, Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians. It's always good to remember, Grandpa eats popcorn. That's a great way to remember it. That's how I always do it. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, we see a state of these three men. And if you always make a big deal of Peter if you want to remember this verse for the Catholic Church. And when James and Cephas, that's Peter. That's Peter. And John, well, there's Peter, James, and John, who seem to be pillars. Pillars of the church. These were the main support of the early church. Peter, James, and John. Not just Peter, but Peter, James, and John. Those were the three, you know, they were the, the focus. They were the instructors of the early church in the book of Acts. And Paul gives them pillars. Pillars hold things up. Pillars need a good foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And what greater foundation than James, as the man we're talking about, when he was of the elite of the elite of the disciples, he'd been places where Jesus, where not everybody had been going. And a pillar, he writes the gospel about Jesus Christ. So again, we have John the Gospel of John. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And then the book of Revelation written by John. And then Peter, we have 1st and 2nd Peter. He's the writer of them books. And then James, well, duh. What would James would write? Why, there, why would there be any question to who is the author of the book of James? But James. James. And But that is a question. That is a no matter who you hear. And next week, we'll get into the Gospel of John study, but today we break down who is John. And hopefully, we know. we know who he is. Uh, any questions? Comments? Bryce? You know, there... Our Christians today don't even know. And their Bible perversions, their perverted Bibles have changed. We're going to run into things right now. If, if you have, I know we don't, we don't, but somebody has a modern Bible, they're, they can't follow them. We'll, we'll see that. But wouldn't it be great to study your Bible, find out the men we're going to meet one day? Wow. We're going to meet John, and 
We may not remember today, but if the word is hidden in our heart, Amen. you know, 